Let's Got Gem Stories. So today we have an interview with Dr. Tom Watchman. Dr. Tom Watchman is the author of the Zero to Finals study guide aimed at medical students. He graduated from Manchester in 2014 with an MBCHB and has subsequently moved into the GP training track. He has developed revision materials for medical students and junior doctors in the form of written notes, videos, and a podcast on his website. So thank you again so much for talking uh, with us today, uh, Tom. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to kick off with the, with the first question um, I have for you. So when did you first decide to write Zero to Finals and what was the motivation behind it? Um, I think the Zero to Finals really has been going, it's been something I've been thinking about for a long time. I think probably since my first, second year of university. And uh, I think probably on the postgraduate training program, it's slightly different. But when you come straight out of school, um, you're very much spoon fed in school and there's you know you can buy a, a book that tells you everything you need to know for your exams you turn up on the day there's no surprises you know what's coming up you put the answer down and you you score very well and then you go into university particularly a course like medicine and it's so open-ended there's almost endless things that you can study and the textbooks can be really challenging they're written by academics they're very scientific uh, very you know science based and very um, detailed and uh, it can be very overwhelming to know where to go to and I think the whole way through medical school particularly in the first few years I really struggled to know how far to go into detail and what to learn and uh, spent most of my time sort of floundering what information is is actually important to know so I always had this idea in my head that I, I would love to go back and create something that made it easier to know, to navigate the system, basically. Um, and uh, that's what, when Zero to Finals was born, it obviously wasn't called, called that at the time. And I never really had the time and the resources to actually put it together. But then after I finished my foundation training, um, I managed to take some time off and, and really get started with it. And that's when it really started that was in um 2014. i mean the the zero to finals uh book is absolutely fantastic research uh, resource and i'm sure a, a lot of my colleagues really really do do like it uh, but if we can move on to the next question when you look back at your time in medical school what would you say was the toughest part and in contrast to that what would you say was the best part um i think I think the toughest part in medical school probably was finals. Um, as far as just uh, learning the material, probably finals, because you, you've got so much to learn. You, you've got to learn everything, basically. And it can be really challenging to know where to, where to start and how to organize your time and um, how to cover everything enough time so that you really understand it. Um, but then there's loads of other challenges in medical school. You know, it's a time where you're trying out a load of new different things, which I'm sure we'll get onto, uh, where I was involved in lots of different things like playing basketball, um, involved in pantomimes and things like that, where you have to learn to balance your time and not let your studies slip. And that's something that was also quite tough. But um, yeah, the best part of medical school was just all the extracurricular stuff that I did, you know, playing basketball, um, just uh, getting to meet so many new people, all the fun things that you get to do. Uh, so Tom, uh, le leading on from that, I uh, just want to know, what was your favourite memory uh, from medical school? Um, I think this is a tough one because there's so many. I was thinking about this, um, but I, I think... I would say most of the, the best memories that I have from medical school have got nothing to do with medicine. It's to do with my colleagues and peers. And, um, you know, if I try and think of the best memories I have, it will be just time spent, you know, time spent with friends that I've met in medical school, uh, playing basketball, um, working on projects together, even studying together, preparing for exams together. You know, you've got housemates that you live with, and I think. Often you take it for granted at the time, but you realise that uh, it, w it was so special when you look back on it. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's that's very true as well. There's, there's you know there's a there's a lot more kind of outside of outside of uh, medicine. But um, if it'd be possible to know, we just want to to ask, 
What was it first like when you started treating patients as a, as a junior doctor? And do you have any kind of memories that really stand out uh, from that? Hmm. Um, pretty much a baptism of fire, actually. Uh, I remember it is really, yeah, that, that transition between medical school and starting work is really tough. Um, and I don't want to scare anybody, but it, it can be a real challenge. And I remember uh, my first day you do a, a sort of work experience, or not work experience, a shadowing period where you shadow some of the F1s who are leaving. And I remember my first day on the ward, um, I had a bit of a break for the summer, I'd been on my elective, and uh, I went in and the junior doctor who was doing the ward round asked me to examine a patient's chest. And I just felt, oh gosh, this is really thrown in. And that something so small, really, examining someone's chest. Um, and then I remember that week I prescribed some fluids for someone on a fluid chart uh, for a, an older lady who needed some IV fluids. They told me exactly what to write, I signed my name and then I went home and I worried about it all night long uh, thinking that I'd definitely killed this person. The first time I prescribed, you know, I was going to go in in the morning, they would be in crashing heart failure or they would have died overnight and I went straight to their bed and they were absolutely fine. So. Um, and then I remember I started on a night shift for my first week. My, my first week, I started on nights at the weekend. And one of my first calls was to a patient who was scoring a nine with like horrible chest sepsis on the ward. And I remember just feeling like, gosh, this is so much to handle, so much responsibility. I called my SHO, they told me, you know, um, let's start some antibiotics, let's start some fluids, let's get some blood tests and an X-ray. And uh, I spent a long time explaining to the patient's son that, you know, this is what was happening and uh, went back to see that patient in the morning and um, thankfully they, they were much better. So they were scoring a one or a two and looked looked much better as well. But but sort of. Absolutely, yeah, I think reflecting on this, this is the most important thing I would probably say to your students is that when you transition to becoming a doctor, you're practicing completely based on what you've read and what people have told you, and you have no experience of what actually happens when you prescribe that drug or you do that treatment. And what you really need is that feedback loop of uh, prescribing the medication and seeing that the patient gets better or nothing bad happens. And then over time, you see that you know, you're doing the right thing and all these things you've read in the book, they actually work. And, um, you know, with sort of safe guidance from your seniors and things like that, you start to build your confidence. And that's really what turns you into, you know, a good doctor. Feedback is key. Uh, just, just, just that feedback of seeing that the patients are still well and you're, you're doing the right thing. And then you build your experience and gain your confidence. But that's probably the, the most challenging thing when you first start is that you're starting from nothing. You don't have any experience. You know all the stuff, but you, you, you've, yeah, you've never done it before. So you just need to, you need to do it and, uh, and see that you're, you're doing the right thing. So that's that's something that's really actually very nice to hear that uh, you know with after or after all this book learning that eventually it does it does click in click into place. Um, so Tom, if, it, if it's possible, I'll ask you, um, can we just ask kind of what, what you do uh, or what you get up to now, um, other than of course zero to finals? Yeah, so um, I graduated 2014. Um, I finished foundation training 2016. I started GP training in 2017. Uh, so in August this year, hopefully as long as all the portfolio and tick box exercises go well, I should uh, qualify as a GP and then I'll be a, a full-time GP or fully qualified GP. Uh, so, so Tom, you obviously really, really kind of enjoy, enjoy the GP, uh, the GP uh, tract. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll come with a lot of flexibility. Uh, ge general practice for many reasons is um, I would highly recommend as a career to people. Yeah, there are so many reasons why general practice is an amazing career. And um, I'm sure we can have another talk about it some other time or we can talk about it as much as you like, but I, I could advocate for GP um, all day long. Um, so can I just ask, what, what's, what's your favourite part of the job? 
Um, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Um, I think being a GP, you, what you find as you go through medical school is the first step is sort of learning the basic science. Then the next step after that is you start to learn about the conditions and you learn how to spot conditions. You know, the patient comes in with these symptoms, what's the diagnosis? What test do you want to do? And then once you feel comfortable with the conditions, you start to focus on how do you manage those conditions and that's what becomes interesting. And then as you go through your career, I, I found anyway, that this is a personal experience, that once you become comfortable in how you manage the patients, what becomes interesting is the patient's perspective and why they've come to see you and what their concerns are outside of the condition. Because the medicine becomes, a, a, in general practice and uh, in a lot of other areas, the medicine becomes almost second nature. So the people become the most interesting thing. Um, so what I love the most about the job is, is sort of learning about the people and, and finding out about people's lives and why they've come to see you and what they're worried about and that becomes the most interesting thing. So a lot of things are very easy with medicine once you've done it long enough. Um, you know, how do you treat this chest infection? How do you treat a heart attack? How do you treat this? How do you treat that? <coughs> and the interesting thing is the person behind the treatment. Um, obviously, if you become a surgeon, you need to become extremely skilled in your, you know, surgical skill set in your profession or if you're doing uh, PCI procedures, you need to have all those skill sets. But as a GP, the most interesting thing is the individuals. Uh, so, Tom, I, I think we'll definitely actually we'll definitely have to get you back in for a, for another chat, uh, talking talking about your your GP life, um, especially because it's it's so kind of integral to to our course. Um, so, we just also want to know, you know, you're you're really heavily involved in in medical education and you know and you're going to see a lot of rare conditions do you ever find yourself recapping over over kind of past material you've done for instance you know do you do you open up a copy of zero to finals after you've seen a, pa a, a particularly uh, difficult patient at all yeah i mean people might not know this but everything in the zero to finals books is available on the website so you can access it completely free on the website um and uh the way i create zero to finals it requires going through the guidelines in sort of intense detail and then comparing it to literature reviews and uh, primary research and textbooks and other online resources. So I really go in depth in a lot of things before I produce quite a simplified uh, sort of outcome. So often what happens is a, a patient will come in to see me and they might be on a certain step of the asthma ladder or they might have difficult to control hypertension or some funny symptoms. And uh, it's, qu it's quite useful for me to flick onto the website and have a quick look at what I'd written before and then bring everything back. Because I find it easier to go through some of the things I've made rather than going to the, the guidelines, uh, especially having been through them before, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I think in a way I shot myself in the foot with the zero to finals title because it's just as good for GP trainees, paediatric trainees, uh, medical trainees, uh, everybody. So Tom, it, it seems like you really just kind of live and live and breathe medicine. Um, I just wanted to know, is, is there anything you do as a, as a hobby or anything kind of other than medicine that takes up your time at all? Yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would encourage, particularly in medical school, it's really important to, to have lots of other things going on. Um, for me at the minute, life is a bit crazy. I think for GP training, I've really had my head down, work on zero to finals, work on my exams, work on the, uh, I, had a, I did a master's in medical education. I was working on that pretty intensely. So it was really living and breathing medicine. I think uh, um, I've had a lot of things over the years. I, I got really into motorbikes at one stage, so that was a good escapism. I would ride off my motorbike into into Scotland or Wales, something like that. Uh, I, I, I had a period where I was making a lot of short films and that was quite useful. It gave me a lot of skills that I've brought over to Zero to Finals. Um, so yeah, keep, you know, doing everything you can is, is really important. So, uh, so motorbiking, mo motorbiking in Scotland must have been really cold. Uh, yeah, I've been all around Scotland actually, all the way up the west coast, round the top, down the east coast, 
Um, yeah, I've been, been all over, really. It's, it's an absolutely wonderful place. Could you just tell us, Tom, what, what does the future kind of hold for you in, in both your, your GP career and, and Zero to Finals? Yeah, I think uh, as far as me first, um, I'll finish in GP training in August. Um, and then after that, I might take some time off to do some more work on Zero to Finals. Um, <clears throat> then it'll be a case of finding a job somewhere, hopefully a part-time salary job, so that I can spend the rest of my time teaching. Uh, hopefully spend a lot more time talking to students. And Zero to Finals really is just, it's just constant work in progress. I've got audio books coming out, I'm working on the obstetric and gynaecology book at the moment. Um, and uh, I hope to really get back to YouTube soon and do a lot of a lot more videos. And I want to build out the test section of the Zero to Finals website as well. So lots and lots of plans. Uh, a few more plans that I won't tell you about, but watch this space. So uh, just the last question for you, Tom. Um, obviously, you know, we're in a tricky, tricky time at the moment with, uh, with the quarantine in place. If you could give one piece of advice for medical students at the moment in this difficult time, what would it be? I think I would say, I mean, it's a completely new situation for everyone, really. And I didn't go through anything like that in my medical school. But reflecting on my time in medical school, the most the the the, the most rewarding time was spending time with other students. So I would say, while you're in lockdown, try to get on the phone, get on the video calls, get on Zoom or whatever you use as much as you can to other students, and really share what you're doing in terms of your work, share resources, work together, spur each other on, and uh, do it together. Um, try not to, you know, you need to spend some time on your own doing studying, but, but the more you can do it with other people, the better life is, really. Uh, well, Tom, thank you, you know, so much uh, for speaking with me today. Um, would it be possible, just in case any students had any, had any questions for you, especially just as you're so kind of involved in, in, in the GP and educational side, they had any questions for you if they could get in touch with you at all? Yeah, happy to uh, answer any questions anytime you want to talk. Do get in touch with me. I mean, you can get me on my email address, which is tom at zero to finals.com if you want to ask anything and, and uh, I'm always available.